we've made our first signing of the January transfer window, Niklas Sula. Welcome to Manchester United. It is now Bruno, looks for Ronaldo, a good touch from Cristiano, goes for goal, oh what a finish from Cristiano Ronaldo. He continues from right where he left off. So here we are, back again with another episode of the Manchester United Career Mode series. This is episode number 29. Last episode, we made a massive signing in this series, signing Niklas Sula from Bayern Munich for about £60 million. And with him, our defence now is even stronger. In today's episode, we're going to try and bring a certain Argentine to Manchester United. Can we pull this off? That's the question. You guys voted for it and it's now time to try and make it happen. Dybala to United, let's get it done. Obviously, we've got Premier League games in today's episode and we're also going to wrap up our transfer window. Today's episode is definitely going to be a big one, especially with the signings we've got planned. So if you're enjoying the series, let's keep the support coming in. Drop a like in the video, subscribe if you're new around here and well, let's get this started. Time to start off the episode with a quick press conference. If you guys want to see your questions being answered, drop them down in the comments section below. First question, once Marquinhos has fully recovered, will you play him with Sula in the first team? And if so, what will you do with Harry Maguire? So Marquinhos should be back in the first team, ready to play games in about seven days. He's still recovering from his injury. He's back in training, but he's not just 100% just yet. I feel like it would be really unfair on Harry Maguire, who's been outstanding this season, to just remove him from the first team as we sign Sula. We're not going to do that, guys. What we'll do is we'll give a fair chance to all three of these centre-backs. Whoever performs best starts. We're going to play a game of merit here. So if Marquinhos is performing incredibly well, he starts. The same with Maguire and the same with Sula. This way, I think competition will be high and these players will try and perform better and better to, you know, get a starting spot. Let's not just hand the starting spot over to Sula so just because he's a new signing. Let's make him work for it. So I guess once Marquinhos recovers, it'll still probably be Marquinhos and Maguire based on form. But if Sula starts performing well, he'll take that place from either one of those two. So I think that is the fair way to do it. Next question, why not play more first team players in the tougher cup games? So it does seem like a lot of people were really frustrated with my approach towards domestic cup competitions by not using my strongest players in these competitions. Like, we got knocked out in the FA Cups round 3 because we fielded a weaker team. The same thing happened in the Carabao Cup and I know it's frustrating but guys, we've got bigger fish to fry. That's the best way to put it. Our main focus this season is the Champions League and is the Premier League and that's why I tend to, you know, give the youngsters and the fringe players an opportunity in these cup games so that they don't get upset with their lack of game time. Those kind of players are really important for the team as well, even though they don't play most of the games. If an injury happens to our first team player, we need them ready to go and, you know, to keep, give them preparation. They need game time and these kind of games just serve that purpose. I know it's frustrating to get knocked out in the early rounds, but as I said, my priority is to win the Champions League and the Premier League at some point and that's why the focus will always remain on those competitions. Next question, are there no more players to be promoted to the first team? Really excited to see them. I'm excited as well to bring the newer generation of footballers to Manchester United. So right now in our academy, Breno Fernandes is definitely one of the most talented players I've ever seen come from the youth academy. 15 years old, he's already 63 rated with a potential between 93 and 94. That is just absurd. We've got Lucas Peterson as well, the Scottish right midfielder with also a very good potential between 81 and 94. Unfortunately, Patrick Brown and Rory Young aren't all that good, I suppose. We'll still keep them in the academy right now, but Breno Fernandes and Lucas Peterson are just unbelievable and soon we are going to be promoting them. Breno might take a while because he's only 15 at the moment, but yeah, I do want to try and continue to expand our youth academy. With that press conference wrapped up, let's move on. Alright guys, now it's time to talk about some transfer business. So I think I've made the decision, we're going to sign a cam or a centre forward to replace Bruno Fernandes. Not really replace Bruno because what we're going to do is we'll drop Bruno in a deeper role which I think will suit him really well because he's actually got decent defensive stats to be a deep lying playmaker. That's the role I want him to do. Along with Fede Valverde, I think those two could form a wonderful duo which will actually give us a lot more creativity than we had before. Or we could use McTominay instead of Valverde, whichever suits our team better. In that cam role though, I do want to bring in a superstar. You guys voted for Paolo Dybala. 
let's reunite him with Cristiano Ronaldo. And also going back to my FIFA 19 Manchester United career mode, I remember at one point we were making a decision on who to sign, Neymar or Dybala. And back then, we chose Neymar. So it's only fair that in this career mode, in FIFA 20, we choose Paolo Dybala. And let's make this transfer happen. A budget of about 200 million, signing Dybala shouldn't be a problem. Let's actually take a look at his stats. So a 4 star skill move, perfect. 3 star weak foot, uh, a bit meh, but his stats do make up for it. Good acceleration, decent sprint speed, but it's all about that agility, balance, reactions and all that make him special. He's got the vision as well, a wonderful left foot, dribbling is just obscene, finishing, long shots and all. I mean, this guy has got some incredible stats, a lot of good traits as well, the outside foot shot trade, flare trade, finesse shot, I think he'll add that X factor into our attack, so he's 89 rated at the moment, valued at 70 million, now this one is going to be an expensive transfer. Let's start off with an 80 million pound transfer offer, I think that's fair, and let's see what Juve come back and say, I'm sure they'll want more, but you know, no harm in, oh wait, what? 81 million. I swear EA have made some sort of a patch to career mode because why am I able to sign all these players for such prices? Like 81 million for Dybala, that seems awfully cheap. I'll accept it though, a 10% sell on clause. I don't really anticipate selling him at least in any point in the future. So that's fine. 81.9 million for Paolo Dybala. That seems like a decent deal. The funny thing is this transfer could have actually happened in real life. I remember seeing a lot of Dybala to United rumors, but I think United didn't push hard enough and Dybala didn't want to leave Juventus, but it was a possibility. So I guess it's kind of realistic that we sign him in this series. Anyways, let's get the contract negotiations underway. This is what I'm looking to offer Paolo Dybala. 200,000 in wages, a 1 million pound signing bonus, crucial squad role, four year contract length, Let's try and get this done. His wages are actually lower than what he earned at Juventus. So I'm not sure if this will go through, but it just might. You guys know how weird career mode can be at times. And he wants even lesser in wages. Like what? He does want a big goal bonus. Let's remove that and submit offer. A 1.8 million signing bonus though. So he is doing some good business there. And I guess he settled with 210,000 in wages. Let's accept and after a bit of negotiations, we've confirmed the signing of Paolo Dybala, our new superstar is here at Manchester United. It's only fair that we give Dybala his number 21 jersey, the kit number he used to wear at Juve as well as the Argentina national team. Dan James can take number 17. What an absolutely insane transfer this is, man. Dybala, welcome to Manchester United. Look at some of his best stats, man. 94 ball control, 93 dribbling, the agility, the volleys, the vision, the curve. This guy is going to be sensational for us. This is probably how our main team is going to look like if everyone's fit. Ronaldo, Dybala, Rashford, Sancho. It is genuinely a world-class team that we've built right here. The bench is insane as well. I mean, the quality we've got in this side, it is just surreal. Here's a quick look at our season objectives. I'm looking forward to making more progress in today's episode. I'll try and give Lewis Davies a game if possible. More goals with Rashford, Sancho and Ronaldo could be amazing. Clean sheets as well. I'll take that. Let's keep pushing. First game of the episode is an interesting one as we take on Leeds United at Old Trafford. Now, when we played them away from home, they gave us a pretty good game. So, I'm looking forward to this one. A lot of history between the two teams. Dybala to make his debut as well should be an exciting game. The front four of Ronaldo, Rashford, Sancho and new signing Paolo Dybala playing together for the first time. This is genuinely exciting to see Bruno and McTominay in that midfield. I feel like with the players we're playing right now, McTominay would be a better fit than Valverde because he's more defensive. Let's see how that plays out. Maguire captains the team in this one because of Marquinhos not being fully fit. It's, it's a very strong United side. We're going out there to win and to win big. Paolo Dybala to make his debut at Manchester United. Can he have an instant impact? That's exactly what I'm hoping for. Here we go. Sancho on the attack. Looks for Cristiano Ronaldo who's on the breakthrough. A chance for him to score against Leeds United. And of course, Ronaldo isn't going to miss that. 1-0 Manchester United. Last episode, we really struggled with our performances. We couldn't get a single win in the two games that we played. But we're off to a fantastic start here against Leeds United. With who else but Cristiano Ronaldo getting on the score sheet and scoring yet again in the Premier League. Sancho continues to rack up assists for fun as that's another one for him. And Ronaldo with a lovely finish when he's through on goal they're not stopping Cristiano 1-0 up United all problems here for us but Sula is trying to track back as the cross comes in it's a dangerous one cut back inside De Gea somehow makes the save and a double save from De Gea but 
I think the second attempt, the guy was offside, but unbelievable goalkeeping from David De Gea. How did we not concede there? Wow, could be something from this attack for Leeds United. This definitely looks dangerous. Big block from Nicolas Sula and McSomney helps us get the ball away. Good defending, but Leeds are really building and improving in this game as time goes on. They might actually have another chance here. Out wide goes the ball. And now it's Alioski with a chance here. Maguire trying to track back, but good passing from Leeds. A cross might be able to come in. Thankfully, Bruno helping us out there, doing some defensive work, and we get the ball away. Oh, Marcus Rashford has just destroyed the Leeds player right there. And here we go on the attack now. Rashford looks inside for Paolo Dybala, takes a good touch. Ah, oh, but he can't get past this man. Kind of wasted that move by Marcus Rashford right there. Dybala hasn't really had a good game so far. Hopefully... He'll pick up his form. It's only his first game, mind you. Oh, problems here for us. Big problems. Alioski down the wings. Goes back inside to Roberts. This is dangerous. Sula trying to track his run. Can't. Puts his body, though. Big header from Leeds United. But David De Gea is equal to it. Just before halftime, conceding would be a nightmare. So, appreciate that from David. It's a corner. Who else but Bruno to take this one? Decent delivery. Can't really do much with it. Unless it falls to Bruno kindly, it does. And now it's Rashford with another chance. Can't do much. Finds its way to Harry Maguire. Whose shot gets blocked. Imagine a Harry Maguire goal from there. Would be class. Here's Dybala breaking through. Going on one of those mazy runs. What a pass that is for Rashford. Puts it back in. Sancho on the rebound. How have we not scored there? That's the first sign of Dybala's brilliance. Going on a wavy run. And then finding the final pass. More of that Dybala please. Once again on the attack. And now it's Paolo Dybala. Lovely dribbling from him. Still Paolo Dybala goes for goal. And that is Paolo Dybala at his best. We were just talking about Dybala doing that more often. And well, he's now done it. And he's doing his classic mask celebration as well. Paolo Dybala makes it 2-0 against Leeds United. With a lovely finish. Weaving in and out past a couple of defenders. More of that please Dybala. Keep that coming. Number 21 Dybala. On his day before Manchester United finds the back of the net. It's only Dybala's first game, guys. Let's give him a bit of a rest. So I'm going to bring him off for Jack Grealish. And also, let's bring on Anthony Martial for Marcus Rashford and give him some game time. Harry Maguire with a lovely pass into Sancho's path. And this could certainly lead to something. Here goes Jaden Sancho. Still Sancho. Looks for the cutback to Jack Grealish. And that is a beautiful finish from Jack Grealish. The class oozing from that shot was just surreal to see. Sancho picking up yet another assist. He's basically the assist machine of this team. And a lovely finish from the Englishman. Let's have a look at that finish once again. Ronaldo made a fantastic decoy run there. Taking away one of the Leeds players. But oh... That finish was class, even though it was a simple one. 3-0 against Leeds United. And that's full time against Leeds United. A complete performance from us, I'd say. Very different to what we played against Leeds away from home. This was at Old Trafford and we showed our dominance. 3-0, job well done. By the looks of it, Man City have dropped points again in the Premier League. And that means it's an opportunity for us. If we win our game in hand against Watford, we go on level terms with them. And that's big because I think we were a couple of points off both City and Liverpool at the start of the episode. I'm not too sure, but we were definitely a couple of points off one team. So, good opportunity for us to get back on top of the league table, along with City, of course. I know this sounds absurd. Having Bruno Fernandes as a deep-lying playmaker has actually made us defensively stronger because... I feel like Bruno helps us get out of difficult situations so easily with his dribbling, ball control and all that. He just controls the tempo of the midfield. And if you look at his work rates, he's a perfect player for this position. High, high work rates. He's ready to work hard. And I'm actually really excited to continue using him here. And Dybala can take over the creative role of attacking and scoring for us. Watford aren't really having the best of seasons, so we're simulating this one against them. And we get a 3-1 win with Martial scoring a brace. Dan James getting on the score sheet as well. Perfect. Okay, this is definitely interesting. A loan offer coming in for Lewis Davies. But since we've got an objective to complete, it just doesn't make sense loaning him out. Plus, I quite enjoy using him, so we're going to reject this loan offer. And also, even better news. Axel Tsuvansape has returned to first team football. He's back from his injury. Perfect. Oh, wow. That is a massive offer. For coming in for Anthony Martial 76.7 million now I probably would have considered at least negotiating but since it's Man City I'm just rejecting it directly no way am I selling Martial to a direct rival also I've decided to transfer list Eric Bailly because it doesn't really make sense keeping him we've got three world-class centre-backs 
and we've got Axel Swansby, an up-and-coming youngster. It just makes sense to take the money and move on. And it seems like Chelsea want to sign Eric Bailly for 20.6 million. I think I'm going to accept that. Let's just let Eric Bailly go to another top Premier League club and hopefully he can continue his career in good fashion over there. I like this mentality from Paolo Dybala. He already wants to get in on the action, so he wants to start against Everton and, well, I'll consider it. You're going to start probably in this upcoming one. Look at how tight the Premier League title race actually is with City, Liverpool and United all at the top with 62 points. We're going to have an incredible finish to the Premier League this season. Up next, it's Everton who are 8th in the league. They're a tricky team to face, but we're at Old Trafford, we've got the advantage. Let's make it count. Here we go United versus Everton, and this is how I've got my team set up. Dybala still starts. I'm sticking with McTominay because I feel like he adds a good balance along with Bruno and Dybala in that midfield. And of course, Ronaldo, Rashford, Sancho all starting. I'm still sticking with Marquinhos and Maguire because. I kind of feel like those two have formed such a good centre-back pairing. For now, we'll keep that going. And if one of them dips in form, Sula comes in. No problem at all, especially since Bai is being sold. One Bissaka and Lucas Digne as well in the team. A strong United side. Let's keep our good runner form going. Here we go now. Cristiano Ronaldo has broken through. This could be our chance. Ronaldo 1v1. Ronaldo goes for goal. And that is a stupendous finish from Cristiano Ronaldo with his weaker left foot as well. Have a look at the replay for that. It was just class. I did not expect him to score that because shots at the far post in this game don't really work all that well. But when it's Cristiano Ronaldo, of course it's going to work. What a finish with his left foot. That's why we've signed him to be a goal poacher, getting in behind in these situations. And well, Ronaldo is doing Ronaldo type things. He scores his 18th goal in the Premier League this season. It's what, two goals in two games that we've played today for him? Let's keep that going. Dybala. Now Ronaldo, back to Paolo Dybala. This is what we want to see from the two of them. Paolo Dybala has to score. And what a finish from Dybala. Off the crossbar and in. Dybala has announced himself at Old Trafford with a couple of goals in today's episode. This one was just unbelievable. All because of the link-up play between him and Ronaldo. They've been doing it at Juventus for a while. And now they're doing it in the United shirt. Look at that dribbling there from uh, Dybala. And then the finish as well. Off the crossbar and in. Tell you what, when you score a goal on FIFA and it comes off the crossbar, that's probably the most satisfying finish you could have. And well, Dybala's just done that. 2-0 United. One Bisaka seeing Jaden Sancho here. We might be able to cross this one in for Cristiano Ronaldo. And what a finish from Ronaldo in the first half. We've made it 3-0. Everton just cannot handle our attack. Another assist for Sancho. And what a finish from Ronaldo. This is proper goal poacher stuff, man. Making a solid run in behind. Getting on the end of the ball with a sliding finish. You can't really ask for more from Ronaldo. The fact that he's, what, 35, 36 right now and he's doing all this for us is crazy. As Manchester United make it 3-0. Let's take a look at that finish once again. What a ball from Sancho. And ooh, a lovely finish there from Ronaldo. Here we go now. Another attack. I see Dybala in good space. In fact, Ronaldo is in better space here. Still, Ronaldo opens up some space shoots, but this time couldn't be Jordan Pickford. One Bisaka might be breaking through. He's just, you can't catch one Bisaka, can you? The cutback to Paolo Dybala is inch perfect. Of course, he's going to score. Too easy for Manchester United right here. 4-0. Dybala with the brace. Ronaldo with the brace as well. Everything seems to be going according to plan. And remember guys, next episode we've got Bayern in the Champions League, so getting in on this kind of form is key. And well, we're doing exactly that. One Bissaka picking up an assist as well. We've been so dominant in this game. I'm actually thinking of making some substitutions as well. Now, let's bring on Fede Valverde for McTominay. And let's also bring on Anthony Martial and maybe play him on the right side for once and see how that goes. And yeah, that's about it really for the substitutions I'm making, at least for now. Everton might have a chance with Theo Walcott here on the ball. Harry Maguire again with a strong challenge. How am I supposed to play Sula ahead of him? when he's in this kind of form. Ever since we made the signing or confirmed the signing of Sula, <laughs> Harry Maguire's just seemed to, you know, up his game even more. It's actually mad. Now it's Cristiano Ronaldo who's on a hat-trick. Can he score another hat-trick in this series? Of course he can. His third hat-trick in a Manchester United shirt ever since his return to the club. 5-0 against Everton. Ronaldo is on fire. And I think with this goal, he's now the top scorer of the Premier League. We'll take a look at the standings as soon as we're done with this game. A lovely finish. Bruno linking up with him here. The two Portuguese internationals combining to make it 5-0 against Everton. We've completely blown them out of the water in this game. Can we now see something from Marcus Rashford as well? He's making a good run. Still Marcus Rashford. 
Still Rashford releases this one for Martial and it's off the post and uh, that is frustrating. Would have loved to see a goal coming from either Martial or even uh, Rashford but not to be. But we still might have a chance here with Ronaldo. Ronaldo on the ball looks for Anthony Martial. Could really come up with something here. Still Martial looks inside but it's cleared away. And that's that for this one. Another big game wrapped up as we beat Everton 5-0. As we march towards the top of the Premier League. Cristiano Ronaldo takes home yet another match ball. What a season he's having man. Hat-tricks left, right and centre. Let's hope he can keep this up. And the transfer of Eric Bailly to Chelsea is a done deal for 20.6 million. Fair enough, he's been a good servant to the club, but now it's time for us to move on. Hopefully, he has a good time there at Chelsea. We're on transfer deadline day and look at some of the top deals happening right now. Trent Alexander-Arnold for over 100 million to Real Madrid. That is just an absurd transfer. Like, come on, 100 million for Trent. That is just crazy. Is, is there like a way I can see stats right now? Because I'm curious, 100 million for a right back? That is just insane. Well, to be fair, he's actually 87 rated. So maybe 100 million is not that bad of an evaluation on him. Incredible stats, fair play. Real Madrid have just made a big move. Transfer deadline day coming to an end. It's been a huge window for us as we made two world-class signings in, of course, Paolo Dybala and Niklas Sula. This is the team we're ending the window with and this is the team we've got until the end of the season. I've got big expectations with this side, man. Maybe going all the way in the Champions League. Not too sure about that because that's going to be difficult. But the Premier League, we're going for that. Hang on a minute. City have dropped points again. And because of goal difference, at the moment, we're top of the league. With one goal difference better than Liverpool. That's actually crazy. It's been a long time since we've been on the top of the league. In fact, I don't even remember being top of the league at one point in the series even. So... This is huge for us. Now, our job is to try and maintain this spot. It's going to be difficult because Liverpool and City are so close to us. Our next game in the Premier League is against the struggling Bournemouth side. We're going to simulate this one. We get the win with Ronaldo scoring the only goal. Couldn't have asked for anything better. 1-0 United. So, we're ending off the episode being top of the Premier League. 68 points, same as Liverpool. It's going to be one hell of a finish, as I said, to the Premier League. And I can't wait to see how things end up. We're definitely going all in for the Premier League title this season. Top scorers in the Premier League right now, it's Cristiano Ronaldo with 21 goals in 21 games. What a season he's having. Just one more goal than Harry Kane who's just behind him. But it looks like it's going to be between Kane and Ronaldo for the top goal scorer award. Next episode is about to be huge for us in this series because, well, we've got Bayern Munich in the Champions League's round of 16. And that is going to be one hell of a tie. We know Bayern aren't going to make it easy for us. Our first season back in the Champions League. Our first time going at it in the knockouts with United. It's going to be a challenge. We finished second in the group. And that's why we're facing Bayern, a tough team. So... I'm excited for this at the same time, nervous. It's going to be in the next episode. Decent episode for our season objectives. One appearance for Lewis Davies, a lot of goals coming from Ronaldo, and we just need three more to complete the Dream Trio objective. Three clean sheets in this episode as well. Things are going well for us. Before we end off the episode, time for you guys to make your vote count for the Player of the Episode award. Couple of nominees, Cristiano Ronaldo, hat-trick in today's episode, of course he's going to get nominated, he was superb in this one, some unbelievable finishes. The second nominee is going to be our new mega signing in Paolo Dybala, he was superb in this episode, scoring a brace in his second game in a United shirt, scoring on his debut as well. Those two are nominees, Ronaldo Dybala, click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. And that's that, another episode done and dusted of the Man United career mode series, next episode Champions League knockouts is here. Our first time being in such a situation should be difficult yet exciting. But if you guys are enjoying the series, keep the support coming and drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here and well, I'll catch you guys next time.